Picture this. You have a list of errands that need to be run, groceries that need to be picked up, bills that need to be paid. You need to find a new piano teacher, schedule that dentist appointment, get the kids to soccer practice. Then there's the birthday gift that hasn't yet been purchased, another spirit week at school next week, and your spouse just asked you to bring in something for the squadron potluck. If that weren't enough, you just found out he's on the short list for a potential deployment. It's a lot. And when you're trying to figure out how to stay on top of all of the tasks on your to-do list, you're trying to figure out how to manage your emotions in the process, and it's hard to figure out how in the world do I find the time to pursue my own dreams and passions in the midst of this crazy military life. How do I juggle it all as a military spouse and work from home mom? Let's talk about it. You, my friend, were made for more. More than the managing of schedules, keeping up with kiddos, and holding down the home front. Welcome to the Mill Spouse Mastermind Show, the podcast that empowers you to get unstuck and craft a life with more meaning and less overwhelm. I'm your host, Christine, seasoned military spouse, mom of three, and your guide to designing a life you love and growing a purpose-fueled business as a military spouse. I believe you have something valuable to offer. And when you pursue the things that light your heart on fire, you trade frustration for fulfillment and isolation for a life of impact. It's time to discuss who you are meant to be because together we can change the world. I often say that you don't have to wait for tomorrow for some future season to chase your dreams but that can feel hard to do when you feel overwhelmed by everything on your plate and what is on your plate is going to look different than what is on my plate But all of us have a lot going on in life. Most of us, at least if you are listening to this podcast, you probably don't have unlimited amounts of free time in your day. And you want to be able to do the things that light you up. You want to be able to take care of yourself. You want to be able to live a life with purpose. And you're trying to figure out how do I manage it all? How do I thrive instead of just survive? So the title of today's episode is How I Juggle It All as a Military Spouse and Work From Home Mom. Now, some of you probably read this title and you were excited. You are looking for more tips and strategies to help you navigate this life well. You feel inspired to take action. You feel like it is possible for you to craft a life with purpose as a military spouse. But you might have read that title and said, how is she able to do it? Why can't I seem to figure this out? You started to beat yourself up. Be honest. Because I think this happens a lot. If we feel like something is not within reach or is not possible for us, hearing someone else talk about it being possible or that they are succeeding in that area can actually have the opposite effect on us. Instead of inspiring us to believe it's possible and to take action, it can make us feel discouraged, jealous, less than, even more overwhelmed. It can cause us to have a negative internal dialogue. So today, as we talk about balancing everything on our plates as military spouses without burning ourselves out in the process, I felt like it was really important for us to have this high-level conversation. Now, if you are listening to this episode because you are looking for tips and strategies how to do this better, how to succeed and really live a fulfilling life as a military spouse, I've got you. At the end of the episode, I'm going to share the top three things that have made the biggest difference in my life, that have helped me the most when it comes to balancing everything on my plate and being able to craft a life with purpose as a military spouse. But before we go there, I want to have an honest conversation about what it really looks like to find balance, to juggle it all, to manage everything on our plates as military spouses. 
And when I say how I juggle it all as a military spouse and work from home mom, I want to be honest and say that I don't always get it correct. If you are following me, if you are listening to this podcast because you think I have all of the answers and that I never struggle to do this thing well, that I never have to figure out, okay, what is the most important thing in this season, in this week, in this day? How do I move things around and figure out what I need to focus on in this moment? Then I have done you a disservice because I want to let you know that, yes, there are strategies, there are tools, there are systems. I have figured out over the last several years a lot of things that work well and a lot of things that don't. And I want to share what I've learned with you. But I never want to present myself from this place of, I figured this all out, I have all the answers, and I don't struggle anymore. All of us have a lot on our plates as human beings and especially as military spouses. We actually have a lot more things that add stress that can create more anxiety and overwhelm in our life. And I want to be able to help us all walk through that, not because I am the expert and I don't struggle anymore, but because I am in the trenches with you. I've been there, I've done that, I'm still doing it, and I want to help you through it. But I really think it's important for us to be aware of these feelings that arise in us when we think that someone has it figured out, that they are doing the thing. And so there's three things that I want to help you be aware of as we hear people talking about how to find balance, how to juggle all the things, how they are showing up and living their best life. How can we take the best of what people are telling us without getting sucked into this cycle of feeling worse about ourselves? I want to talk about three important things to keep in mind and then we'll wrap up with the three biggest things that have made the most impact in my own life as I try to balance all the things as a military spouse. Here's really why I wanted us to have this conversation today is because I have observed, especially on social media, that there is this tendency, especially when it comes to health and wellness and online business space, that there's this tendency to feel like you have to be the expert, that you have to present your life as having all of the answers and no longer struggling with what you're doing. You combine that with all of these influencers that make it seem like they have the perfect life, that everything goes smoothly, that they never struggle, that they have all of the support that they need and that they have this vision of the life that sounds amazing. And we want that and we think, Why doesn't my life look like that? Why is this not possible for me? And so when we feel triggered by these people, we have these feelings, we have these emotions that rise up in us that can make us feel worse about ourselves, that can cause us to compare ourselves with others, that can lead us to the place where we feel even worse about ourselves and our life situation. So when that happens, because I think at some point, at one point or another, this is going to happen for all of us, there are three things that I want you to be aware of. And the first one is that things are not always what they seem. I know this sounds pretty straightforward, but in this era where so much of our lives are spent online and we can present any kind of life, any kind of version of ourselves that we want. Because unless we are actually in physical proximity, we are actually interacting face-to-face with other people, we can just show the best parts of us, the best parts of our lives. And we can make it seem like everything is great, even if it's not. We can make it seem like we have an amazing life, an amazing family, even though we might be secretly struggling with depression. We might be overwhelmed. We might be having panic attacks. So when you see somebody's life 
on social media. Don't just assume that they have a perfect life. Don't assume that things are the way that they seem online. I think we conceptually know this, but then our brain sees something that sees the picture, that sees that vision, that that persona that they've cultivated online, and it makes us feel worse about ourselves. So the starting point is just to recognize that things aren't always what they seem. And just because somebody makes it sound like they have the perfect life, doesn't mean they do. So when you feel yourself being triggered by something, just remind yourself that number one, things aren't always what they seem. Most of us as human beings struggle in some area of our life. And that leads me to the second thing that I want you to understand. And that is that we all struggle in different areas of life. You might struggle to be organized but maybe you're fantastic at design. Or you might be an amazing mom, but you really struggle to take care of yourself. You might follow an account because somebody has an amazing home, an amazing eye for design, and you wish that your home looked like that. When you are in base housing and you can't stand your floors and your countertops and the leaky faucet that never seems to stop dripping, and you think, oh, if only I had their forever home. If only my life looks like that, it would be amazing. But you don't know what they're struggling with, what's going on behind the camera, behind that beautiful home. They might have a lot of financial issues that they're struggling with. All you know about is that one aspect of their life. And so the second thing for us to be aware of is that we all struggle in different areas. And then the third thing that I want you to be aware of is that what works for someone does not necessarily work for everyone. Again, this really comes into play when you are consuming content because there are lots of content creators out there that are telling you, this is the way, do this thing. If you follow my plan, if you set up your life like mine, it's all going to work out. And that's great because they have found systems and solutions that work for them, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for you and for your life. If you are following someone who has a nanny, who has family that live nearby, who perhaps doesn't have kids, and you have three kids under the age of five, then the solutions and systems that work for them may not fit your family and your stage of life. And that's okay as long as we are aware of the fact that just because somebody says they have all the answers doesn't mean they are the right fit for you. So as you consider following a content creator, an influencer on social media, whatever you want to call it, if you are looking at trying to emulate your life and follow somebody else's tips for life, especially when it comes to investing in a coach or a program, make sure you take some time to look at their life their lifestyle. Do they have a lifestyle you really want? Are they in a similar stage of life to you? Do they understand? Do they have similar values to yours? Think about those things as you pay attention to what they are saying. The advice they are offering may be good advice, but you might need to take it with a grain of salt. If I am listening to someone give tips on decorating their home and they've been in the same home for 5, 10, 15 years. How they choose to decorate their home, the things they invest in that have a specific location that are for one specific area, the furniture that they choose to decorate their home with is probably going to look different from mine because I am focused on things that will move from place to place. I am focused on purchasing furniture that I think is going to work in multiple homes and layouts. It's just a different framework. And it's not that their system is better or worse. It's just that I need to be aware of just because that's the right solution for them 
doesn't mean it's the right solution for me. So when we keep these three things in mind, that number one, things aren't always what they seem, just because somebody makes it seem like their life is totally together doesn't mean it is. Number two, we all struggle in different areas. And number three, what works for someone else won't necessarily work for you. And that's okay. When we keep these three things in mind, it will help us to not feel triggered by someone else's life or advice or success. Instead of it making us feel worse about ourselves, it will help us lean into a fourth truth, that there are tools and systems and strategies that will help you thrive, to make the most of the time you do have, to help you tap into and live with more meaning and less overwhelm in your everyday life. Now, I promised at the beginning of this episode that I would share the three things that have helped me the most navigate life as a military spouse and figure out how to pursue my own dreams and passions at the same time. How do we balance? How do we juggle it all? And the three things that have helped me the most are number one, taking care of myself. It has truly been a learning experience, but self-care is so important. If I am not caring for myself, I can't show up well for anyone else. I've had to learn this lesson hard way because I've been there. I've been the one to let myself get way too stressed out and it negatively impacted my relationship with my kids, with my spouse, with my ability to pursue purpose. It negatively affected my physical health and I've since learned that it is so important to have these rhythms in our daily, weekly, monthly calendar that allow us to care for ourselves so that we can show up and do the thing that is on our heart. And when I say self-care, I mean the mental and emotional and spiritual and physical health practices that help refresh and refuel and renew me so that I can engage with those around me so that I can pursue my purpose from a place of health and wholeness rather than a place of exhaustion and burnout. The second thing that has truly made a huge difference in my ability to juggle all the things is putting systems and routines in place. And this is always a continual learning process for me because every time we move, I feel like I have to start over and figure out, okay, where is everything going to go in our house? We have to get the house organized, we've got to figure out what routines and systems will work for the season of life that we're in, for the location that we're in, for what resources are available to us. But the more that I take the time to say, okay, everything in our home has a place and we have a system and a routine for how we handle cleaning and laundry and making meals and all these things, those help me show up and do the thing on my heart. And when life feels chaotic, then I can't show up well. I can't focus on the thing I want to focus on. And having those systems, those habits, those routines in place really does make a difference in our ability to be productive and use the time we do have well. And truly, the third thing that has made the biggest difference in my life is giving myself lots of grace and flexibility. It's really about building that resilience muscle and learning that it's okay when things don't go according to plan, when I don't show up the way I want to show up, when I don't accomplish the goal in the time I wanted to accomplish it, if I wasn't as successful as I wanted to be. Over and over, I've had to learn to say, hey, I messed up again, I can grow, I can learn through this experience, I need to give myself grace for this situation, to be flexible with the time I have in the season that we're in, in the timeline, and how quickly I move towards my goals. There's just so much joy 
And so much that can happen when we are able to reframe our thoughts and take our focus off the goal and on the process of how we are showing up on a daily basis and who we are becoming. So when I think about the things that have truly supported me the most and helped me on this journey and to juggle all of the things as a military spouse, as a work from home mom, we talk about a lot of these particular tips and strategies on the podcast. But the three things at the end of the day that have made the biggest difference in my ability to show up as a purpose-fueled military spouse are self-care, systems, and developing that resilience muscle and giving myself lots of grace and flexibility on this journey. Those are the things I think are going to make the biggest difference in your life as well. I love to get feedback from you on every single episode of the show, but especially today in this topic, I would love for you to pop inside our free Facebook community and share your takeaways, your thoughts on this topic, or feel free to send me a DM and let's continue this conversation because I think it's so important if we are going to thrive as military spouses, if you're going to be able to stop waiting for some future season to chase your dreams, if you are going to be able to step into your full potential, then you have to be able to shift your response from feeling triggered by what someone else says or does or the way that their life looks and focus on finding the people and the systems and the tools that will actually inspire and empower and equip you to show up for your life. If you found this conversation meaningful, please go share it with a friend and let's begin to change the narrative about what's possible for you and your life as a military spouse. All right, that's all I've got for us today, friends. I will see you back here next time. Until then, may you live filled, fueled, and full of joy. Hey friend, before you go, the Mill Spouse Mastermind community is here to help you thrive as a military spouse. Figure out what lights your heart on fire and equip you to create a life of impact. You can have an incredible impact simply by heading over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. And if today's episode was meaningful to you, I know it will be for others too. Spread the word by taking a screenshot of this episode and share it to your stories so we can continue to reach more people, change more lives, and shift the way that military spouses look at life. Because we are better together, and together we can change the world. Let's do it.